Okay, we're going to be pretty focused on water here for this next section and there's a good reason for that life can't go on without water life depends on water and there are a number of different reasons for that we're going to focus in on four key properties of water that help to sustain life so key properties of water the first one that we're going to bring up here is the fact that water is a very good solvent and we're going to elaborate on what we mean by that um, it's a really good solvent it's good at dissolving other things and at first it might not really make sense well why is that important for life um, what we're going to be seeing as we go forward in the course is that there are, are a lot of chemical reactions that have to take place inside of a living body just to maintain homeostasis and it turns out that water provides the medium for those chemical reactions to take place in so um, what does it mean to be a solvent water is a really good solvent a solvent is just something that can dissolve other things. So the example in the picture right here, what this is showing is like a beaker full of water and uh, we've dropped some salt into the water. Right here is a close-up view of the salt crystal. So we've got lots of ionic bonding going on helping to hold uh, the sodium and chloride ions together. And the water molecules um, look like this. So the red and blue right here is one water molecule. What they tend to do, since they're polar molecules, they can be attracted to either the positively charged sodium in green or the negatively charged chloride in yellow. Did I get those backwards? I think I said those colors backwards. Anyway, uh, one color represents a sodium ion, the other represents a chloride ion. I think, here we go, I should look down here at the labels. Chloride is green, sodium is yellow. Okay, so water can either be attracted to the positive sodium, get it right this time, or the negative chloride ions. And um, just by virtue of the fact that water can kind of work its way in between these different ions and kind of surround, it's almost like it's building a little cage around each one. Um, this means that water does a really good job of breaking this structure apart. And that's what happens when, some, when something dissolves. It's like it's going into the watery solution. So we say that water is the solvent. We would say that salt, in this case, is the solute. Solute is just the thing that's being dissolved. And then if we put those two together, the solvent and the solute together, we would be talking about a solution. So a solution is just um, something where one thing is dissolved in another. In this case, salt is dissolved in water. So anyway, water is a really good solvent. It's good at doing this not just with salt, but with many different things. There are a couple of words to go along with um, this sort of, this sort of Thing that's happening. Um, molecules can be either hydrophilic or hydrophobic and what these words are referring to is whether something likes to be near water molecules or if it doesn't like to be near water molecules. So for example in this case we're talking about salt molecules. Salt is hydrophilic. It likes to be near the water molecules. They're attracted to each other because of those negative and positive charges. Hydrophobic molecules do not like to mix with water, and we're going to see examples of this uh, towards the end of the chapter when we talk about lipids. Lipids and fats, these are things that um, do not like to mix with water. If you've ever tried to mix oil and water, you know, they don't mix. They separate into different layers, so that would be an example of a hydrophobic um, substance. Another property of water that's very important is the fact that it is liquid at body temperature. So, right, about, um, we mentioned this on a previous slide, a lot of our body weight is actually just water. And the fact that um, water is fluid at body temperature means that it's a great place for um, facilitating other things to move about and mix. Um, if water was solid at body temperature, then that would be a problem. There would be no way for things to move around inside of our bodies because it would all be solid. So just the fact that it's liquid is actually very important. Water is the main constituent of all of our fluid-filled spaces internally. Um, we can be talking about inside of our cells or outside of our cells, like in the bloodstream, for example. Um, there's a lot of water present 
in all of those places. So we'll be encountering that more as we go. I mentioned this in passing already, water is a great place for chemical reactions to take place. And um, we're going to elaborate on that a little bit more. There are actually some specific reactions that require water molecules, like the reaction can't happen without water. So we'll be seeing that later on. Um, coming down the list here, water is great at regulating temperature. Water does a good job. Um, this is due to the hydrogen bonds present in water. Water does a really good job of absorbing energy without changing temperature too much. It takes a lot of energy to break those hydrogen bonds. There are so many of them, right, in liquid water. Um, that water has to absorb a lot of energy before the water will actually start to, to heat up, um, change temperature, start to boil. It takes a lot of energy to get that to happen. So um, in our bodies, what this means is that water does a good job of just kind of keeping the temperature consistent. We can absorb, like we can go outside in the sunshine and our temperature doesn't start to go up super fast, right? We, we have, <laughs> we're able to stay out there and absorb a fair amount of energy um, without that happening. Water can also help to cool us down. If we do start to overheat, then our bodies can sweat and um, when water leaves the surface of the body, it takes a lot of energy with it, and that in turn helps to cool us down. So, regulating body temperature is another really key property of water.